things are so much different than it was then. Yeah. Niggas now know they don't have no respect for one another. They let the money handle them instead of handling the money. They don't share. They don't share. But I think the fact that y'all all really had grew up together had a lot to do. Yeah, that. there was a whole. You know, team. y'all was a real. Yeah. Y'all had a real community still. And you know, soldier is a soldier, man. When it's an earner like J.C. Rex, he's supposed to be giving, man. Coming when he come in the crew and he get in the crew and he throwing it, he's supposed to do it. Everybody that was hooked up with us, man, it was gentlemen, all of them. I mean, we just was blessed to have the guy that was with us. Okay, who are we with? Alexander Newell. And where might the public be familiar with a character based on you? Stars, uh, Born Money Fast, second episode. And what, who was the character and what happened? Well, the character was a canine, my brother, Lawrence Newell. So isn't, was, I thought, who was saying canine was almost like an amalgam of the two of you? Because there were, were there brothers in the show or was it just canine? It was just canine. So did you feel like they kind of combined you two? They might have. I, I believe well, so. I believe so. I believe so. So what, what happened in that? Who was canine supposed to be and what did he do in the show? Well, canine was the guy, well, it's my brother who um, basically... Um, turned Meech on, you know, was giving Meech the um, kilos. Um, basically, what he was, he was, he was. What uh, happened in the episode of that show? Didn't he shoot? Wasn't there like a? Oh, you talking about the um, the Saint Cecilia, right? Oh, bro, you got it. Oh, oh I said no. no. I said no. Yeah, you got it. Um, okay, yeah. you're talking about the Saint Cecilia. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that was my brother um, Lawrence. They depict him in the in the movie star. I mean, the BMF um, um, movie. Um. What What was the real What was the real incident behind that? Well, basically, what happened? Um, I was sitting in the gym when it happened, and it was a guy. On the opposite team. Basically, let me take you back to when it really, really, what really happened. They had played a game. They had played a game before then. And the guy who they was playing against, the, the, they had lost the game. So they wanted to play another game. And they were gambling. The first game, the first, the first, the first, the first game, they, they had a bet on the game. But the streets and... The talk was that they bet all this money, $50,000 on the basketball game. That wasn't true. Mm. That wasn't true at all. Wow. No, that wasn't true. Y'all didn't know that, but that wasn't, that wasn't true. They didn't even have a bet. And they, and cause they were doing some street business together. Absolutely. Absolutely. And. Well, what, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, so, so what, what happened was it was a guy on the opposite team, asked my brother, can he play with him? This was the second game, which they didn't have. They had no, they wasn't betting on this game. They bet the first game. My brother won. So they come back, they play again. He, um, the guy, I don't know his name, but he asked my brother, can he play on his team? He, um, my brother let him play on the team. So the game started. Um, the other guy, everybody know who the other guy is, 50. Everybody know who the other guy is. Shout out to 50. Yeah, shout out to 50. They play in the game. My brother team is winning. They, they, they get to 
talking shit, basically. The guy that's on the team that he let on the team from the other team, they get to talking shit with the with 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 fifties boys in the stand, and they got a little rowdy, 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 rowdy. So they got the somebody threw something and I guess hit him in the head and he was bleed. So they called the game off. They called the game and as they was walking out. My brother asked the guy, what happened? He's like, man, one of them hit me. So my brother told Steve, he said, man, why don't you get your people? That ain't for me and you. That ain't for me and you. Man, I, that ain't for me and you. So the guy, 50, according to my brother, according to my brother, he said, you go too, nigga. And at this time, they're, that had to be kind of shocking because... Your brother was feeding this guy, on, or like, or he was one of his sources. Well, he had came through some time, couple times. Okay. And he wasn't was, working for him per se, but he no, had a cop. No, he he was cop for him a few times, I believe. Large scale. Large scale. Cashed out. Ain't and no. Your brother's operating now. If somebody come and saw your brother, they were spending a hundred thousand and up. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, and and on the way out of the gym. He asked, he was telling Steve, get your people, man, that ain't for us. Get your people, that ain't for us. And then he was like, man, Steve said back, who you think you is, nigga, you go too. Now, that's the true story right there. I was sitting in the gym. We was getting ready to play next. And there wasn't no uh, uh, pro league. It was the college league. They had a pro league, they have a college league, and they had a high school league. This was the pro college league. It wasn't a, oh, he had pro t people on his team, nothing like that. No, it wasn't like that. Well, some of these guys did go to the NBA. Yeah, he did. They did, but they, potential pros, they end up going to the NBA. And that's what happened, man. And um, he didn't shoot him in the head. He didn't kill him. He shot him in the leg. That stuff they seen on BMF, that, it didn't even happen like that. But I remember that in the paper, just reading it when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And the way they described it in the paper was pretty, I mean, I guess it was wild. But, like, so was gambling on games, you know, by guys that had street money that was a common thing in St. Cecilia's? It was a common thing in all gyms. Oh. Not just in St. Cecilia. It was common at Brewster. Mm. Brewster Gym. It was common at um, Parkside. It was mm. common. That's what we did. We gambled. We gambled every day, all day. That's something I learned a lot of, and this is across all ethnicities, across all geographies, a lot of drug dealers, and even like mobsters, big gamblers. Oh, yeah. Big, big gamblers. We, we had, um, when I first came home from school, and that was in 1985. And you played basketball in school? Yeah, Alabama State University. Okay. When I came home from school in 1985, my brother had a, after I was joined on, Shane and near Mac. And it was down the street from the 19 hole where Demetrius had his after I was joined. And his kind of headquarters. Yeah. And it was down the street from Stokes. Stokes had an after I was joined down the street. It was three of us. Three, three after I was joined on, on the street. On Shane. And everybody would come through. Everybody. I mean, you name them. Uh, the best friends, Maserati. Demetrius, Huckabug, you name them, Milwaukee Jack. Did that go hand if you were on that E or just in the upper leagues of dealing drugs in Detroit in the 80s, were you, was being part of that gambling, not necessarily that you had to gamble, but is that where you could also go meet people? Absolutely. It was part Absolutely. of the. Absolutely. That was, that was the meeting spot. Mm. That's where you know everybody and everybody who was getting money and. That's where you meet people at. So, yeah, that was a meeting spot for the drug dealers back in the day. Stoltz was a bad guy. I took my, I ain't saying bad person. He was, as far as the way he handled his business, the way he handled his after hour joints, he got more respect than any joint in any, any city when it was him. Because the person, you know, when they came in Stoltz joint, a lot of people just there feel like they had money. Well, you know, they can damn near go in any joint. And, 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 and get a goddamn donut, a tip or something. He didn't let you in and do anything. 
but not in Stokes joint. <laughs> Come to Stokes joints and do some stupid shit like that. He going to beat your ass right there in front of everybody in there. And I respect him for that, you know. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, he uh, he was the latest man, too. Oh, so Stokes was an older guy that probably made more money than anybody. He made, made money. He made more money because Stokes didn't gamble. You very rare, rarely you've seen Stokes gamble. Stokes would walk around with the big money in his hand, mm. had the money in his hand, but Stokes wouldn't gamble. And what and the after hours it works free. He he provided the place and he cut every he cut certain ten percent and ten percent ten percent. And what and he's like providing security and it was, he was the security. Oh, <laughs> he okay. was the security. Okay. You know, <laughs> yeah, he was, he was, he was found to be at the hemp. So. Yes, he was very, very, very strong guy. He worked out a lot. And um, I heard stories about him when I was younger. When police came in, he would knock the police back down the steps. You mm. know, that's a story I heard. You know, I don't know how true it is, but. And he didn't have no problem putting his hands on the police either. He didn't have a couple of incidents where he had to down the head. Uh. Where they came in that raid his joint. I mean, he was down. Well, he was on Shane, right? On Shane and Ford. He and he started He started off over there on a cast in, in the cast corridor. Well, that's where he started off at. Then he ended up having a pool room over there on Finkel and uh, Wyoming. I mean, that's, that's where he died. Time. He never sold drugs, though. No, he, he only ran after hours. So when he, before he died, he was one of the biggest number men in the city. So he ran. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I always tip my hand yeah. to the night. And I gave him a little, I forgot to give him a little. I give him a little respect too. He did a little pepping too. <laughs> yeah. That was the story. What yeah. type of sums of money were going on with these different so you just named a few well known personalities, mm -hmm. best friends, Demetrius Maserati, your brother, like what type of sums of money were people gambling? Wow, man, it was whatever. Hundreds, hundreds of thousands. Two. Hundreds of thousands. Yes, yes, yes. So, despite uh, this, as a quick aside into the psychology, so at this time you guys are selling large amounts of drugs in one of America's most dangerous cities. The 650 law is still in effect. All of you are, any day you wake up could be your last of life or freedom. Absolutely. And the money you're making, you're just, then just cavalierly just gambling back and forth. That was just something we love to do. We, I've been gambling since I was 12. And take us back to those days in the late 60s and early 70s, because that's interesting. That's when, well, by the, people think different cities are different, but in the Detroits and Chicago's and New York's, like some of the big main cities with bad reputation, by the early 70s, sort of the things that are we um, associate with, like, you know, problems in urban America were already to the, the the standing outside selling drugs, violence amongst young people. Well, you you know what? And that's interesting you say that because when my father was selling drugs, they wasn't outside standing on the corner. At that time, I didn't notice it. But you had to know. Yeah, yeah. They, it's pre YBI. This pre YBI. This this right on the cuffs because. When we moved out of the projects in 1975, we end up coming back in 80. And at that point in 80, when I was about 15 to 16 years old, we end up coming back. And when I came back to the projects to stay with my grandmother, that's when I started seeing everybody outside. All of my friends was, you know, everybody is outside now. It ain't in the house and people coming knocking on your door. And, you serving them and you gone. Well, let's let's stay. Let's before we go to that. Let's stay back in that early seventies. What was your exposure? What was your father doing? How much did you notice it? I noticed it every day. We every day. It wasn't it was heroin. Heroin. It wasn't no secret. It wasn't a secret at all. It was on the table. Lactose was being cooked in the oven to bake the sugar off. That was the cut. Take oh, the I heard that. Take yeah. the sugar off. You take the lactose and you put it in the put it on, on a pan, put some aluminum foil on it, he put it on the pan, he put it in the oven, and he cook it. And he, he was, I was told that he was baking the sugar off of it. So when he used that as the cut, the hair. Mm -hmm. um, what, what amounts of money do you think? Well, what was being sold? It was that to mix, was that to, 
when they say penny cash, it does, does that mean a dollar worth? Or there was just a that was a, that was, that was a little bit before me. Okay, no penny six. caps was that was a six. That was a little bit before me. What was he selling? Like dime, or was he selling weight to neighborhood people? Or no, he was selling dime bags. He was selling. He wasn't selling the the ounces and the stuff like that. It was the ten dollar packs and. But it was a lot. It, it was the McDonald's spoon. Mm. It was the McDonald's spoon. Does what did who were the customers? Was it was it people in the project? One of the projects. So it was well, how unsafe or safe? Like we was we were safe. You guys, because okay, family. Yeah, we had a large family. Uncle had a real real large family. And it's to to be doing something in the projects. Probably you had to be from a certain one of those large families or have a certain reputation. I would I would say that you had the uh, the Nelsons. They was pretty, and they stayed directly across from us up the roads and gray. Uh, that's right. That's right. Uh, they stayed directly across from us in the projects. We stayed on this road. They stayed on the road right between where the monkey bars. So that, matter of fact, I just seen his son the other day. Well, oh, yeah. Now, did you know Greg and Rose Nelson? Did right? I know him? Shit, many, many, many shootouts that me and five O had. Uh, we, had we used to have shootouts down there. About, the, about we were trying to steal each other customers. Because you know it was Greg and Rose. Right. The reason how Fat Frank come in. Fat Frank started off working for Rose, Rose and yeah. Greg Nelson. And he got his own place. You understand? Yeah. And Frank was. They was, was Roy Jack Legends. Oh, yeah. They all, was, was, all them was on the, the same Nelsons block. The Nelsons moved a lot for your daddy. A whole lot. A lot for A lot. Yeah, I mean, I was cool with our whole family, man. You understand? Their mama, she was real sweet, too. But uh, I can't forget about T.D. That's the rock. Top dog. Yeah. And Pat Rock. And Pat Rock. I yeah. ran into them. Yeah. Shout, shout out to T.D. Shout out to yeah. Pat Rock. Oh, you know, I yeah. ran into Pat Rock maybe this year and a half ago. Yeah. You know, he the one got that departed from uh, Obama. That's right. right. He got yeah. a, Pat Rock. Pat Rock. T. He home. He home. Yeah. He doing well, looking yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and then little thing, Milwaukee Jack and Treacherous, them was my dad. Uh, you understand? Like Pet Treacherous, he was known man. He was a man. He was just like a he was pimping, a gambler. He was an all around hustler. And then he started selling drugs. And then, like I say, you understand? When I remember the first time me and Eddie served him some, we saved served him some at uh the motel on Jefferson, the Click. Sure, Chris, Motel. Yeah, yeah. That's where we used to meet him at. Still so, open. Oh, yeah, it is, right. Yeah. And uh, Treasure's still living. Is he? Yeah, Milwaukee. Shout out to Treasure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Milwaukee, you understand, man? He, he was getting money, man. He, he was well known, man. Not just yeah, with Troy, yes. all over the United States. I was setting that because I listened to the Whispers album cover. Huh? And he was on the cover of a Christmas song. Huh? Milwaukee Jack is on the cover of when. Oh, he was the shot. He was one of the shot oh, yeah. as you can see, man. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, like I say, uh, another guy I don't want to forget about yesterday. There's so many people that I can talk about because, man, a lot of I don't lost a lot of my memory. And another guy name was Pratt, Fat Pratt. He understand. He used to be one of the salesmen at the cousin's shoe store. Mm -hmm. And by him being there, he met people from all over, mm -hmm. you know, United States, because you know. Niggas to come everywhere. Yeah, they, they. And he called. He got a lot of connections, shit too. So he started. You know, he didn't know nothing about drugs, and he just looked up on the connect, and he knew who it was because everybody buying his shoes down there. And me and him got to be real close too. He ended up going to jail on Bush Jones' case. Y'all were there. How you do that? I don't know, Mister there, But anyway, <laughs> you know, they, 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 he was on his case with them, and uh, Milwaukee, he was one of the first people to start selling. Two, two of the young oh, boys. Young boys. Yeah. He walking. Yeah, he was doing that, you know, and Pratt was serving a lot of peoples too. But uh at the Milwaukee, His name was in the papers. Yeah, it was. That Pratt guy. Yeah. Uh uh when uh when uh, when Clubs and Clues show when clothes and shit Cause the shoe store, uh -huh. when they went out of business, yeah. Big Butch. He ended up getting the shoe store right there on 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 uh, John on and Cadillac Boulevard. A lot of people thought that was Milwaukee Jeff. Milwaukee ain't never had no shoe store. That was big butch show, Mill Stoke. Milwaukee would just be down there like that was like his office. That was his office. That's yeah, what that's you talk where about where you talk about you had it. Yeah. That's yeah. Where yeah. Came yeah. On, that's where it was yeah. Set up. And see Big Butch yes, they had a brother named Watts Tusi. They just do a lot of diamond. And see when Bill, Big Butch so had that shit. You'd have to know Wayne 
We was working for them at the time and wound up going to the city slicker. I talked to Wayne yesterday. <laughs> Wayne's on me all the time. I've been dealing with Wayne for about 40 years. Another yeah. Detroit legend. Yeah. Yeah. Wayne yeah. at oh, Broadway yeah. City yeah. Slicker. Another and Detroit see, legend. You see, uh, you see uh, Big Butch, you understand it? When he had that shoe store there, he had another one on Woodward in Holland Park. I forgot the name of it. He was selling the same kind of shoe with the cousin that was you. He went ahead to, and I was, oh, what we right? And he, you understand, uh, he started going, coca- going, going off on that cocaine and stuff, you know, you know, but before he got killed, you understand, you know, he, uh, he ended up shooting. What was behind him to get the kill? His, 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 um, his, his brother's daughter, boyfriend was jumping on her all the time. And it, you know, Butch had a, like a little tight, uh, it had a re- reputation in the notes of the guy was kind of scared of him. So, Butch was going over there on sale in the second. And one little time, uh, uh, Poppy Seal just go over there to get his niece. When he went in and the nigga was waiting on him. And the nigga just then shot him in the head. It was killed too. Yeah. Yeah. There was YT's daughter. Damn. Oh, yeah. Like I said. Well, you know, Butch was coming to do something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was actually going just to get Yeah. Well, he, he, he know, you understand. Know, Butch wasn't coming over there just to talk to him or whatever, you understand? He was probably afraid, you know? Because Butch was getting money too, matter of fact. That's how I meant to connect with the guy I had in, in uh, California. His name was E.J. You hear me tra- talk about E.J.? Oh, uh, you know, he just died a few years ago in, uh, in the federal penitentiary. He was a big guy there in California. He was serving all these niggas in Detroit back in the late 60s and 70s. Yeah. Hey, Butch, did you, um, now Marzette, you, by the time you got done, I know obviously you had heard about him. We trying to get a hold of some of his people. Oh yeah, I, I know a couple of people. You understand? Matter of fact, I don't want to mention their name, but I know I know uh, one of his women used to be with. Matter of fact, you understand? You stay across from you when y'all was the kids uh, on Cavalry and Woodward. You know, yeah, yeah. Right. Hey, watch. Matter of fact, watch watch y'all when y'all was a kid. Oh, I know he told. Me. Yeah, I know he told me. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, see, it was one of. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't want to call our name, but hey, it's, 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 yeah, uh, we yeah we about them to like get in, but yeah, well, I'm to get. I mean, they can all get sit around me to take you yeah. to that, and I can record it. You still taking? Yeah, yeah. Still, go ahead. Right, let me tell you about. Let me tell you about the property. You want me to say about that? Yeah. I had a couple of hotels down in it. I see brush in the Brush Park area. Anybody that was normally in, uh, in that area, everybody know Dodo. Dodo owned more property down there than anybody. I'm tomorrow. He had the Fine Arts Theater. He had all them big buildings on John R. Atlee, Erskine. I'm tomorrow. He had all that property down there. He ended up getting killed. And uh, like I say, that, I'm, I can only speak on the property that I had. I had one building, it was a 52 unit. And when I bought the building, it was in the 70s, I paid 14000 for it. And it had 52 units. And I had another in a building, it was about 30 units. I didn't pay but 20 for that. Mm. Now, I know that they was coming through there, that all that property going to be, you understand, you know, up in Dallas. If I still had that property right now, man, I would, it would be, I, I would have, you understand, three, four million, probably more. No problem. Why? But I, yeah, I, I would know that. that. That's right. But I end up, you understand, getting indicted. You know how they do what ends up. You know, yeah. Yeah. No yeah. yeah. But that, but like I said, the money that we was getting back then, you just say it's 10 times that much it is now. Yeah. You know, that's what I'm saying. The niggas getting 10,000 a day back then, it's just like a hundred thousand a day. But we was getting a hundred thousand every day. Well, as they said on that Feds magazine cover, you know, yeah. basically you're talking about a million dollars yeah. a day because a hundred thousand dollars a day back then is the same as a million dollars. And me and Eddie used to have so much fun. I'm somebody. Just imagine you riding around the city. You got the biggest cars that they have on the market. You got enough money to do what you want to do when you want to do it. You can go anywhere in the world, which we did. Me and him be riding down the street. He said, God damn, black boy. Man, this got bored around this motherfucker. Yeah. He said, man, let's, let's go uh, London. 
point. Like, anyway, whatever you're saying is, a matter of fact, we had a goddamn map. He said, man, just point at the map and say, that's where we're going. And that's the shit we was doing. And I'm talking about we did it first class everywhere we went. But tell us about how it was when you went to Rio and fell in love with Oh, Rio oh, did you know it? Rio did you know it? Rio de Janeiro, we went to every country in South America, from Rio de Janeiro all the way up to the Panama Canal. I'm talking about. But when did you fall in love? In Rio? In Rio. Oh, okay. They got their fine pictures you ever seen in your life. I mean, all over South Korea. They ain't sent us to it. I mean, like I say, shit, just anywhere you go when you're standing with you. Wait, wait. I mean, was she selling the pussy? Was she, was she put it like this here? You pulled out. Hey. You know, she, she, she was working. Her, she she was working. You were you styling and profile. Yeah. She worked yeah. at a restaurant yeah. until now. Yeah. Like I say, you understand? She did it. It feel like that was a catch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like I say, you know when they see money, when they see it, so like I say, you read. What's your tip? What you tip? I can't even remember what was the tip. It was way more when they was really probably making a month. And then you tell her, "Come on, let's go out tonight." Yeah, we we had Eddie understand? We had dates with him and all that, man. We did everything. We did our thing. And like I said, I'm telling you, this motherfucker, what if he said, you crazy motherfucker, what you think you're going to have all of us with him? Yeah. You know what? <laughs> what was the set? What was, how bad were the projects like in 1971 or two? Was it already pretty unsafe? Were people. Well, I, the projects wasn't all that bad. Or everyone knew each other. Everybody knew each other. It wasn't that bad. Uh, for an insight. Now, we wander, but people weren't really gonna wind around. No, 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 no. You wasn't. You, there wasn't no reason to be in it. You, you wasn't. You wasn't coming down there. You wasn't wandering through there. I didn't see where some people was wandering, and, and they didn't. They didn't. They didn't wander, they, they wander too far. They didn't fare too well. I didn't see that happen. So no, it wasn't. It wasn't that type of party then. You know, um, you actually had to know somebody to come down there, if, especially if you was coming down there to try to work you was trying to move something yeah. it's best that you know somebody and that person that you know sh should have a reputation they get to have company right and let the, let's uh let's just talk about the general milieu of detroit back then i mean there was about there was about more than twice as many people within the city limit so in 1970 there was 1.5 million there's about 620 now i mean mm -hmm. almost more like tri tri triple the people really mm -hmm. so there was a lot of people downtown the brewster projects just were just east of downtown and the jeffries were just west those were two of the larger public housing crime places in the country um those were like the size of the big chicago and new york ones a lot of people near downtown you're talking about that shane area a lot different what was you know, was was that old downtown Detroit kind of a contained? Like, what was life like just in general? Like, where'd you go to school? Did you go to school? Like, was the school in the projects? Did you venture much afield? What was it like? No, we didn't. We didn't too much as a as a as a child. We didn't too much venture out of the projects. Uh, I did. The school was basically right across the street. You had the Lincoln Elementary School. You had Spain, which connects to. Lincoln Elementary School. I was unfortunate to go to Spain because we moved out, but I went to Lincoln, and Lincoln was uh, elementary school. Um, Project was cool, man. I mean, everybody knew each other. Everybody got along. You know, the, I think the problem really came in is when the crack came. We can make a movie. I was like, if they can do it, if they can do this and it's a blockbuster. Now, I know nothing about cinematography or nothing. I just watch movies, right? I know nothing about it. I know nothing that you have any interest in films. No, we, we were we were in clothes. We were garments. Deep, deep into the retail world and on a whole different grind.
a gentleman in some expensive clothes approached me <laughs> and said, uh, you know, I'm Courtney Robert Brown Jr., etc., blah, blah, blah. And next thing you know, fast forward 11 years, and we own the $20 million block, French Road and Mac. And uh, this is just another uh, chapter in a lot of really powerful solid. content me and him have done and talking about the, the 40 year saga of his and other families here in Detroit doing illegal things and legal things. You know, you, you can't talk about that era without talking about the biggest real name of that era, at least around here, meaning where he, where he was in Southfield, right. without talking about Eddie and Courtney. Yeah. And at that point, I, I knew about Eddie and Courtney from reading that famous front page story in the newspaper from that research, but I didn't really know the the ins and outs or the particulars. And he started to, you know, school me on it. So then when I had an opportunity to, to hook up with, you know, the, the real deal Holy field of these like they're gonna color it up even more and the rest of the rest became history. So